Well, hello friends. This is Amanda with Molly Cole Creations. We are back this week with a few new projects. We are doing lemon themed projects this week. Starting out for project number one. This is a little wooden board from the Hobby Lobby. It came in a set of three. This is the middle size of the three that it came in. And I liked it because it has that lip there on the side. And I also cut a stencil on the Cricut in a lemon uh, slice. And I'm gonna get a first coat or a base coat and I'm using this yellow paint. It is by DIY. It is called uh, something cake batter. That's what it's called cake batter. So I just give this a base coat and then I apply this stencil down and truthfully this stencil wasn't even super helpful. I probably could have uh, freehanded this as I ended up freehanding a lot of it anyways, but I thought that this would make things a little bit simpler because I am not the best artist and, but you know, there's not much to, to painting a lemon, right? So I'm going in with a different shade of yellow. It is called Maze and it's chalk paint by Waverly. And it's just a little bit of a different yellow. So I thought these two would look really good together. Now this chalk paint, I don't know if it's old or I left it open too long at one point, but it is like ridiculously thick. So I did mix it with a little bit of water on that little plate next to me. So I couldn't even pour it out. I had to like scoop it out, but it worked. Did the job just fine. I'm peeling off that stencil while it is still a little bit wet and then I come in with some white draw in that middle or paint in that middle I should say and I'm going around each of these little lemon pieces just giving it some dimension I'm gonna blend and as I said I am NOT an artist I kept looking at like a picture to to see where the best like little highlights would be, how I wanted to trim all of this and shape it all and just make it look really pretty and just uh, have it all go together. I didn't want any like sharp or crisp lines necessarily, but I wanted you to be able to at least tell it was a lemon, right? That is the idea. I'm going to use this as kind of a tray. I contemplated putting handles on it at first, but then I decided I'm going to put some legs on it. And that's my ice machine, if you just heard that. And I am, yeah, so I'm going to put some little legs on it. So I guess it's going to become more of a riser than necessarily a tray but it's just gonna go really well with all the rest of our lemon DIYs for this week. And I did have more projects in mind. So there's gonna be kind of a part two, I guess, of this lemon themed decor for this season. This video was already getting fairly long and so I decided just to break it up a little bit and then I can still have all the things that I want to make in a video. So this is how it's looking at this point. I'm kind of rimming that round circle, not going all the way to the edge. So you can still see some of the yellow making it, you know, look like a slice with the rind and all the things in between. And then I took kind of a dry brush. Well, it was just the same brush I was using for the white. I just, once it got a little bit less full of paint, I kind of went in the middle and of each of those little triangles and just dry brush some white in. And I'm kind of doing the same thing with the yellow, just filling more in, making that a little bit more round 
and I'm really just kind of working as I go, just doing what I think looks good. I kind of uh, diminish a little bit of that white and again just using a really dry brush with that yellow and kind of filling in some of those areas. But it does end up looking really, really beautiful. So if you think that you can't freehand and paint something, you can. And you just got to try it and do your best. And because I, I might be crafty, but I, I am no artiste, that is for sure. But I actually end up loving how this turned out. I was pretty proud of myself, actually, that I pulled it off and thought that it looked really good. And then... After I had let that dry up pretty good, I took the antique wax and little water mixture that I keep on hand at all times, and I painted that around the rim, and I did the inside, and I also did the back, just so that it would all look finished. I did both sides and wanted it all to look like a finished piece. I took a damp paper towel just to kind of uh, rub that all in and get out any of the little streaks that my brush was using and that is how it turned out. It looks like we used actual stain and I used the damp paper towel with the stain on it already and just rubbed it around the front. Just a hair. I didn't do a whole lot of it. But I think it turned out so, so beautiful. These are the little legs that I'm using. We cut them and I've been using spindles off of these chairs for the last year. Last year we found some free chairs off Facebook Marketplace and we've been cutting them down these are the ends of some of the spindles I had previously used. So we cut them um, all the same size and I'm just using the wood glue from the Dollar Tree and just I, I haphazardly measured. I didn't do a great job of it because I didn't mark anything but I did want the legs to be somewhat even we don't want a topsy-turvy, and I, I do intend to set things on this, so I didn't want one side to be kind of more top-heavy than the other if I put stuff on it. So I get all four of these legs. Originally, I was thinking I would paint the legs or do something to them, um, even thinking about maybe painting them, like dry brushing them with white. I don't know. I may end up doing it. I guess you guys let me know what you think, but I ended up leaving them just as they are with this original wood look that they already had. I do set this aside. Those legs need to dry for a good while before they're going to be sturdy, but that is how it turns out. So cute. I love it. On to project number two. These are some frames. Well, I think they once upon a time came from Hobby Lobby. And I have three of them that were just sitting around. Not, I wasn't using them for anything. And I gave them all a coat of white paint. I'm using just the Rust-Oleum white chalk paint. And I left the frames black, so I just tried to cut in the best I could. I didn't tape anything off. I was being lazy. And then I went on to Google and I just searched for some free printables. I did use the Cricut to size them because it made it easy um, in the print and cut setting. I just didn't have the Cricut cut it. So I printed a few off more than I even needed just because I wasn't sure exactly what I would want to use. But um, once these dry, I do apply it with it's called liquid patina but first I need to get them trimmed out and they're not all the exact same size they look it but I did have to kind of cut hold it up to it trim some more I'm just using a little paper trimmer to do that just to keep my my cuts straight as I could 
and I just kept cut all four sides and then I would hold it up against the frame and I think on all of them I had to do a little bit more extra trimming to get it to fit perfectly but where the background is white um, couldn't really tell if I was off by just a hair but again once we have all of those done also I'm just using regular copy paper and just a regular printer to do these so this was a very very simple project and this one is going to, uh, probably I'm gonna put two of them in my kitchen and the other one on that little tray that we just made I'm doing kind of a little vignette I guess we could call it and they all end up looking really cute no matter where I put them and this one I love because it has the bees on it and the lemons and you know if you aren't into like lemons like I am I know lemons is probably not as trendy as it used to be you could do this with any theme any of these projects you could do with any other fruit strawberries or watermelon or you know just flowers roses you, you know you can google any image and, and there's so many free ones out there let alone paid you could even you know purchase images as well and just size them up to the size that you need and there you have a project it's just too easy to even really call it a DIY really but then as I said I just get out that liquid patina it is just like Mod Podge I just don't have any Mod Podge so that's what I'm using right now and I coat the frame in itself and I also coat the paper just to get a good secure seal onto this with the paper and I am using that little card to smooth it all out to not get any wrinkles and I thought I'd have wrinkles I didn't it actually um, the copy paper smoothed out really well I was also nervous this ink was going to bleed um, but it didn't I didn't coat the tops and that might be why it didn't bleed but either way look how they turned out I love them so cute that is so fun they just make any space feel happy they make me feel happy project number three this one is so easy I don't even think we can call it a DIY I was at Hobby Lobby the other day. They have tons of stuff on clearance right now. This was one of the things I got. This little ceramic enamel, I don't know. I guess it's a mug, but it's quite large. And you could pot something in this. You could do all kinds of things with this. So I'm just getting the little price tags. You couldn't read it there, but it was like $3.30 or something on clearance from, I think it was like $15.99. And then I am taking, I have a book of lemon transfers. The book is by Iron Orchid Designs, IOD. And I went to go find the link for it, but this particular lemon transfer book is apparently, they call it retired. So discontinued, I guess they're not making it anymore. So I couldn't really even find a link. But they have the most beautiful lemon images. It's just pages and pages of them. I've had it for a year. And I still have so many to choose from. Still several pages worth. And this was the perfect surface to apply a transfer to. I couldn't find the little stick that the transfers usually come with. So I found the closest thing to me, which was this uh, half-used stir stick, I guess. And it did the job just fine. So you just rub, 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 apply little by little, and 
then remove that top sheet. And just as you remove it, make sure everything has become stuck to it. And voila, beautiful. Then you take that sheet, that top sheet, and just burnish over the top of it. And it is good and sealed. Then I stuffed some like a garbage bag and some paper towel down there. Just grabbing some greenery and some florals and just kind of adding a little bit here and there, not making too much of it. I don't know that I'll even keep it in there, but we'll see. And then I decide I want it to be a little bit lower, so I'm not cutting these stems in case I want to reuse them on something else. So I'm just bending them to make them slightly shorter. And then I just shove some lemons. Now I did buy a bag of lemons at Hobby Lobby as well the other day when I was there. They were not on sale, even though floral was. And the cashier told me the lemons are never included in the sale. Whether or not that is true, I don't know. But that was kind of a bummer. I think it was like $10.99 or something. I was like, whoa. They were in the floral wedding section, which all of that was on sale, but apparently the lemons are excluded. So now I know. But that is how that one turned out. And look how beautiful. What a nice little touch to our new lemon themed vignette that we're working on. Now this is one of those little cutting boards from uh, the Dollar Tree. And we are just getting that opened up, taking the wrapper off. I'm going to give it a good coat of white paint. I'm going to paint the front and the back. And I am just using this kind of as a base coat. It's just the Rust-Oleum white chalked paint that I am always using. And then I let that dry. And now I'm going to pull out some tape, masking tape. And I'm gonna mask it off so I can paint in some stripes, I guess we'll call it. And I'm doing two pieces of tape on the side, and I am trying to measure. And then I'm putting kind of two overlapping in the middle for some thinner stripes. And that's kind of how I figured that I wanted it to look. So I had to overlap those two pieces of tape in the middle. And I'm using the green uh, DIY paint. It's called Avery, I believe. Yeah, and this, I only gave this one coat. It didn't need more than that to me. Anyhow, and I only painted the top with this green. I did not do the bottom, and I pulled that tape off, and no bleeds. So that's a win. Always a win with no bleeds, right? Uh, yes, please. Beautiful. This green with the white is so, so pretty. I just love it. So we just get all that paint right off of there and throw, I think I said paint, tape off of there. We are using another lemon transfer. And I went to apply it, and then if you'll see right in the little red, uh, right hand bottom corner, I noticed there was some straggling like leaves of probably the vine I cut it off of in the book. So I went and trimmed that off. I didn't want to have those on there. So I cut it down, trimmed it up a little bit, and I kind of fiddled around with placement, where I wanted it to be, which side I wanted it to go on, and then I went ahead and applied it using that same little half stir stick that I used with the last project on the other transfer, 
and this one went on perfectly no trouble at all and then I am going to add some legs tiny tiny little legs they are from Hobby Lobby they're actually called like candle holders I don't know what kind of candle you would put them in and I realized as I was editing this video that there is no footage of me doing that so I don't know what happened to it but I just used glue I didn't use any nails or anything to apply it this is so lightweight that I didn't feel like it was necessary and I used the Sherbond thick super glue it's not a flat the little legs are not they don't have a flat surface you just have to apply glue to like the little rim and then I put something heavy I turned it and I put something heavy on it just to make sure that those legs were good and stuck and I did double check in the end to make sure that it was adequate so that is what it looks like even though you didn't see me glue them on and there it is so beautiful I absolutely love it this is project number five and it is our last project this is a, a very rustic piece of wood it came off of actually that same chair that I've been using the spindles it's part of the seat and it has been very weathered it is water stained uh, it's not a quality piece of wood but I'm still gonna use it so I'm measuring it out here I measured six by four and I'm giving it just a quick coat of the Waverly antique wax with the water mix so I can just try to even out some of those tones and it's it's not a perfect paint job but I do do the front the back and all the sides and then I set that aside to dry for a few minutes while I hop into Cricut Design Space. We are going to create a stencil decal. And as always, I start first with a shape. So I went into shapes, I selected a box. And then I went into the measurements and typed in my dimensions. For visual purposes, I did change it to brown, but that is neither here nor there because we're not actually cutting it. Like I said, it's just for visual purposes. Then I went into images and I searched for lemon slice and there's hundreds if not thousands to choose from. So I found the one that I wanted and it came in this way so I went up to rotate it. I changed it to 90 degrees and flipped it around and then of course I made it much much smaller to fit up here on our block. And then I'm going to grab the text. I'm going to type in some text and you can unlock that little lemon which is what I did to kind of change the dimensions further. I am going to type in freshly squeezed lemonade and then I am going to change the text to kind of a farmhouse they call it like a redone style text it's called the skinny. I already knew what I, which font I wanted to use so I didn't need to search I just typed in the name of it and I changed the font and then I adjusted the size and I also went up and adjusted the spacing in between the letters you can increase or decrease spacing in letters and that helped me kind of fill out this space a little bit better without getting anything wonky I attached the lemon and the text and I hid the brown rectangle because we aren't cutting that we don't need it I went over to make it selected on a mat because I that's how my Cricut is and we cut it out of stencil vinyl here we are we are just weeding it out super easy and just gonna get our stencil ready to apply to our little wooden block nothing to it.
So we got the weeding done, and as you can see, uh, this piece of wood is not flat. I was just kind of trying to decide which side I wanted to use. And I want it to kind of shelf sit, so I want it to stand on its own. So I was just picking the best way to do that. I'm applying some transfer tape to the piece, and then I went ahead and applied the stencil down. Now, between how rough and the condition this wood was in and the Waverly Antique Wax that I put on it, this stencil vinyl did not want to stick. It was not having it. It took some work to get this thing to stay down at all, or like any of the pieces. So I kind of fight with it for a little bit and eventually I get it done, but I cut most of it out because, I mean, 10 minutes later, come on. What a pain. However, we got it done. This is a step that I usually skip because I don't find it all that necessary. But being as though I had so much trouble getting this piece of stencil vinyl stuck down, I am going to take this extra step, applying the liquid patina or Mod Podge to the stencil before applying the paint. I'm not wanting to risk any bleeds considering what a pain this was to get it all put down. So once I did let that uh, decoupage dry, now I'm going back to our maize color paint, the yellow and the Waverly. And I'm just using a regular brush because this paint is so thick and dry. Um, I'm just kind of dabbing it on, just pouncing it, I guess but I'm not using a special brush. Just whatever was handy. And I am doing the entire thing in this maize yellow. There we go. We are done. We are going to reveal the BUT underneath it. And it turned out perfect. So I'm just going to pop off those little innards of our letters and there you have it this little plaque is complete and so simple so adorable i love it and here we are with everything we made in this video all set up and that is another way that i can use my little riser to display and just one thing after another is just as cute as the other. I had so much fun making these. I truly enjoy this type of decor and it just makes me happy. Like I said, if you're not into lemons, whatever you're into, you can do all these same projects with and just adapt them to what you like and what your style is. And just create your home to be a happy place. Thank you all for watching. We will see you next time. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe.